Welcome into Wager Talk TV. I am Drew Martin, joined by Bruce Marshall and Ralph Michaels. Guys, we're talking a little NFL action here. 10 a.m. Pacific kick on CBS. Talking Cleveland at Baltimore. Looks like Baltimore laying seven or six and a half, depending where you're shopping. As of we're talking right now, good one to shop around. Make sure you're getting the best of the number. Also seeing a total of 45. Bruce, go to you first. How are you looking to bet the Browns and the Ravens? Well, I mean, last year this was a very tough matchup for the Ravens. They lost the first game in Cleveland. Now that's when Flacco was still at quarterback. And then the second game, which was right at the end of the season there, that's the game Baltimore had to win to win the North. Cleveland was paying, playing better. Baker had taken over long before that. And he passed for almost 400 yards in that game. And they had a chance to win that thing right at the end. The Ravens barely survived. But Cleveland did cover both those games last year. I am wondering right now about the Browns, though, if we didn't oversell the Browns, and every, not just me and everybody else who were thinking it's a tricky this team, handicap. It's a tricky, tricky handicap. I don't know about this hire of Freddie Kitchens. I think they forced this a little bit too much. There's a lot of big personalities there in that locker room. And frankly, this offense has struggled some. And it is a deep ball offense. It is a slow developing offense, not slow tempo, because they play at a rather quick tempo. But the play is there. They need to protect Baker a little bit better to give him time to look downfield. They're not doing that. Now, it was the Rams he was playing last week, and the Jets bring a lot of pressure like they did two weeks ago. And Tennessee really messed them up in the first game. He's just not getting enough time to throw. And that's got to change. Now, I thought their defense, though, actually held in there pretty well against the Rams last week. And give Steve Wilkes credit for mixing and matching. He had some injuries in the secondary. And they hung in that game. And actually, the Browns had a chance to force overtime or maybe even win it if they scored that last TD and went for two. So I'm thinking maybe serious history here. Cleveland has a chance. And they played Baltimore tough last year. But it's that total now I'm thinking might be a little bit high. Mm -hmm. I could see this thing maybe falling below 45 uh, on Sunday in Baltimore. Yeah, it'll be a fun one to watch. And uh, Bruce spoke to the fact uh, of him, you know, throwing off uh, off balance a lot, escaping the pocket, and due to the offensive line, at least in some port, part. But, Ralph, what are you thinking here with the uh, Browns and Ravens? Well, let's remember, against the Jets, they were going against their former head coach, who's the D.C. of the Jets, and blitzes as much as anyone who knows Baker Mayfield. Then you go to the Rams. There's no pass rush in the NFL like the Rams right. because of Aaron Donald mm -hmm. with the middle pressure. Every other team in the NFL gets pressure from defensive ends. You step up into the pocket. With Aaron Donald, you can't. And you saw Baker with happy, happy feet right. just wanting to get out of that pocket because he hadn't been able to step up into the pocket with Donald. So that changed a lot. But I agree with you on Freddie Kitchens. And again, I'm from Cleveland. I'm a Browns fan. But... Freddie Kitchens had never been an OC. He was an interim OC last year for eight games for a team that anyone that played the team, this was an 0-16 team the year before, you didn't care about playing the Cleveland Browns. You didn't have any, you didn't have any type of enthusiasm to play him. Then what happens? He gets promoted to head coach. He goes through his first training camp as head coach, and then he names himself as same OC and calls the plays. Listen, Sean McVay could do it, but he's a rarity. For a first-time head coach, a first-time OC, to do double duty, I think he's in way too deep. And we saw some funky calls the last couple weeks because of that. Now, with that said, I think Baker plays better, and I would be on the Browns here if we get a few defensive backs back. The Browns played against the Rams without all four secondary starters and their middle linebacker Kirksey's out for the next few weeks. Kirksey's huge. He calls the plays. When you're without your cornerbacks and your safeties, you're not going to be able to defend anyone, yet they did a good job against the Rams. My issue was if they had their cornerbacks, those cornerbacks are good enough with Ward and, and Williams to play man-to-man, -man, and all of a sudden you can put a spy on Lamar Jackson and negate some of his rushing. When you don't have those cornerbacks and you can't play man-to-man, -man, you lose that spy against Jackson, and Jackson's able to run the ball a lot. Uh, you know, the Browns are 1-10, in 10, their last 11 in, in Baltimore. This is a situation where I agree with a lower-scoring game, and I think Baltimore is so overrated because they played – Historic bad defense in Miami, historic bad defense in Arizona, the number 31 defense last year in yeah. Kansas City. This is the first real defense they're facing. I think Baltimore's offense gets a bit of a shock, and I think Cleveland's defense, again, shows that they got a lot of guys that can step up and keep this game close. He's Ralph Michaels from wagertalk.com. Follow him on Twitter at CalSportsLV. Also, Bruce Marshall from the gold sheet at Bruce A. Marshall. Guys, don't forget that any 5% bet is backed by our 150% wager bucks guarantee where, where you will get 150% back of the purchase price in credit.